Hello and welcome to our next Reflection on the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And today we talk about the fourth commandment. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land which the Lord your God gives you. As we will see, this commandment has a very wide application. It doesn't simply encompass uh, our immediate family, uh, so it's not just relating us to our parents but also to our brothers, our sisters, our siblings, uh, to our wider families. Uh, talks about our relationship uh, in society. So maybe our relationship to those in positions of authority, such as teachers, uh, leaders, uh, politicians. Uh, and it also encompasses our widest duties uh, as citizens, uh, and our relationship with the society as a whole. So it's a wide-ranging application of this commandment. But let's begin with the family. The family really is a domestic church. The relationship uh, within marriage and family are ordered to the good of the spouses and the procreation and education of children. It is a domestic church because the relationship between the members of one family uh, is meant to be a mirror image of the relationships between God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity is a model for our society. And the family is that little society. The family is that little group of people uh, essentially uh, a setup of relationships. Uh, and so this fourth commandment illuminates uh, those relationships and all other relationships in society for us. Honor the other person is essentially uh, the import of this commandment. And so within the family we have the children. What are the duties of children? Well, first one is to have respect for one's parents. And that respect has to come from gratitude, uh, an awareness that what I have, I have received from my parents. And we know uh, that in not perfect setups, which family is perfect, just as the Father, the Son, and the Spirit but that no matter to what degree we are perfect or not perfect, reflect God's love or don't reflect it, uh, we do receive life, we do receive the basics uh, in this little community. And so, even out of gratitude for those basics of life that we have received, uh, we need to have respect for those who have given those to us who have contributed to our growth, to our well-being, to our maturity, to our growing up. Uh, and so our duties are also of obedience. The duties of children are to be obedient to their parents. Insofar as the parents are not asking something that is sinful for us to do, and the children are under the same roof, uh, they are called to show obedience to the parents. Again, to show through their life uh, what Jesus has shown in his life. He came in obedience and to do the will of the Father. Uh, and so our way of being, our way of life within families, is also a mirror image of the gospel life. And we also have a duty of materially and morally supporting caring for our parents, whether it's in old age, whether it's in illness or at other times, uh, we are there to provide that support for them. Uh, and so the roles uh, may have to be reversed. You know, they have brought us up, they have raised us, but now they are the ones who may need our support, more of our support than the other way around. At the same time, the parents also have duties to their children. And essentially, with this fourth commandment, the duty uh, 
for moral education and spiritual formation of their children. Uh, it is not the role of the schools primarily uh, or of the wider community or even of people like myself, first of all, to teach and educate your children when it comes to morality or spiritual formation. Uh, that begins at home. We are here to support it, uh, to help to develop it, uh, to help you uh, to raise your children in the faith. But it is the duty of the parents to do it. That's your special mission, to educate in the faith and to begin it from the earliest of years. And you do it by your example, by the way you live, by the way you relate to other members of the family, by showing your children that you also fail, that you also need forgiveness, by teaching them how to ask for forgiveness, how to be reconciled with one another, and so all these things can be modelled. A life of virtues can be modelled in the families. But it also means that we do the hard work on ourselves, that we actually struggle to live a virtuous life in our daily life. And to remember that the families are also there to show children, to teach them that the first uh, vocation of each person is to follow Jesus. He is asking us to follow him, to teach them from the earliest of years that, that following of Jesus is the most important thing in their lives, and to give them the opportunity and to create an opening as well uh, for the possibility of that special calling, that special vocation, to give their whole lives to the church in service of people, in service and worship of God. We mentioned uh, the duties to our families. They extend to wider circle of people than just our parents. But we also need to extend that honor, respect uh, to those who are in positions of authority uh, in our civil society. And so our political figures, those people who are entrusted with authority. Uh, as much as we can sometimes disagree with certain things, with certain judgments, uh, we can point those out, we can demand change, we can uh, do all sorts of things, but we should never lose that sense of respect that someone has been invested with this authority, sometimes for a specified time, uh, in order for the good of everyone, for the common good. And so we should never lose that sense of respect, and that as much as we can disagree with other people, they are there to serve us. And so the duties of the civil authorities are to exercise their authority precisely in that spirit, in that spirit of service. Uh, they are doing this for the common good. In the process, they should also respect the rights of the human person uh, and do whatever they can to help everyone to enjoy our freedoms and also to grow in our own responsibility. And to remember we live together. We need to share the space given to us, whether we happen to be in a smaller group or in a given country. And so the duties of the citizens are to see those people invested with the authority as representatives of God, to do our duties. Uh, and when I mention representatives of God, it doesn't mean they are afforded divine status and are beyond reproach. It simply means to remember uh, that our societies are trying to mirror the hierarchy of values uh, for our common good. This is what we are trying to achieve together. Uh, and so we need to be aware of our own contribution to society, to the good of all. And so we have the moral, moral obligation to pay taxes, 
because they are used to support everyone, especially those who are most in need. That's the intention. Uh, we have this moral obligation to exercise our right to vote, not to waste that right, not to give way to cynicism, uh, but to carry on, uh, to persevere uh, in this idea, in this conviction, that my voice matters, that my voice is important. And we also have the obligation to defend one's own country, to defend others. And so the country, those who are more well off, uh, also have certain duties. They are asked to welcome the foreigner, which is an important theme in the Old Testament, uh, to welcome those who are coming here in search of security, in search of a means of livelihood they are not able maybe to attain in their country of origin. There can be so many different reasons uh, why people uh, change, emigrate. Uh, but also those who come to respect the country who adopts them, to respect its laws, to respect its history, its customs. So there has to be that mutual understanding, mutual uh, understanding of our own responsibilities, and again that sense of respect, of honoring somebody else. We are not obliged in conscience uh, to follow the directives of civil authorities uh, if they are contrary to the demands of moral order or are against the rights of persons or the gospel. And so as Catholics, uh, we need to be mindful of what is right, what is true. And the gospel is that ultimate measure uh, which gives us that light to be guided by. Uh, and so the Church encourages us to take an active life, take an active part uh, in everything that happens that contributes to the good of the society. And so be involved in politics. Uh, be involved in whatever way you can uh, to bring about a real change for the good of all. Essentially, to increase that respect and that honor. Uh, to help people exercise their freedoms, but to do it responsibly with the common good in mind. God bless.